So now in this video, we're going to look at resistors in parallel. So we will take the measurement of them. This particular meter, we can just set to the omega symbol, the ohm symbol for measuring resistance. The red probe for this particular meter is always in that same spot unless you're measuring high current. So some meters, you have to move that over. And we will zoom in. We don't need to look at the power supply at this moment. So I have two 1000 ohm resistors, but we're not gonna get exactly 1000 ohms. So they have a tolerance, they could be about 1% higher or lower than their rate of value. Look like that's about 1% lower. And that one, even more than 1%, but uh, pretty close to 1%. That's their rated value, these blue ones in particular. So that's a uh, one kilo ohm, 1000 ohms, one kilo ohm, 1000 ohms. This is a 510 ohm. And you can see the meter is showing 507 right there. So it has half the resistance. That is the main thing. So right now we can actually look at equivalent resistance. We're gonna take the one kilo ohm right there and it's not going to any jumpers or anything, just to two blank rows. And then we're putting the other one kilo ohm resistor into these same two rows. And now we can go to any point along here with one probe and any point right there with the other probe. And there you can see, we got about 500 ohms of resistance. We saw before they were both slightly below one kilo ohm. And so it was uh, even more below 500 ohms. And there you can see we have the 510 ohm resistor there. So practically the same resistance between this single resistor and those two parallel resistors. Now what we're going to do is show more real life applications of this. So we have it on the omega symbol. We want to turn this to milliamps of current because we know will be limited to the milliamp range. We won't be anywhere near the amp range and microamp will be way too low. So this is not quite as auto ranging when it comes to current, but still pretty auto ranging. And uh, actually I was gonna show one more thing. We're gonna take one of these one kilo ohm resistors right here and we're gonna leave a space. So we got to the positive rail there. We're gonna leave a space between the resistor and the negative jumper right there and we'll pull back because we can also get an idea of current from the power supply but it's not as accurate as the meter so in any case we got five volts a thousand ohms of resistance we expect five milliamps of current and so a milliamp is one one thousandth of an amp so it makes the math easy and uh there you go, I just wasn't connecting the metal for some reason. And uh, we got five milliamps of current. And since the uh, resistance is actually slightly lower, we could expect maybe slightly higher. So now I'm gonna take the other one kilo ohm resistor right there, put it in parallel. And now we had that current, five milliamps going through. Now that we have two in parallel, we actually get I must have missed a row, I did. So that's the problem right there. Always check your wiring when you don't get the readings you expect. So now they're both on the same row. And uh, now we have 10 milliamps of current. And so I'm having a lot of bad luck making good connections right there. So 10 milliamps of current with the uh, two of them. We already saw the power supply there. We'll zoom in so we can see this a little bit better and see that 10 milliamps current. So the current's added up. When it comes to parallel resistors, especially when you're doing the math, which we're not gonna do on here, you actually calculate their conductance, how well they conduct, because the conductances add up when they're parallel. So those are both one kilo ohm resistors. And we're gonna pluck them really quick. Be careful with the resistors, they do get hot, but these are not very hot. So we're gonna take the 500 ohm resistor now and again, we have about 10 milliamps of current. So the same current with a load, a lone 510 ohm resistor as two parallel one kilo ohm resistors. So it's slightly different. It's not exact in this case, especially because it's not a 500 ohm resistor, it's 510, but it's approximate, which is 
uh, good enough for most electronic circuits. So now we already saw the uh, currents, and uh, in fact, we can uh, we can just get rid of the meter right here. We can see all that we need with the power supply for the most part. And what we're going to do with with this setup here is so we still got five volts across all of this. Let's take the uh, get that out of the way. A one kilo ohm resistor. Put that from the jumper that goes to the positive rail to the jumper that goes to the negative rail. There you can see about five milliamps of current. When I add the next one in parallel with it, now you can see about 10 right there. So going pretty good. Now, 500 ohm resistor, each one of those letting about five milliamps of current. If we add this third one, so five plus five, that's 10. We're gonna add another 10 but uh, with this lone resistor, we'll have approximately 20 milliamps of current on here. And there you can see, this says exactly 20 milliamps of current. I do have the power supply set to cut out when it gets to 30 milliamps of current, just in case I short circuit something or whatnot. Uh, nothing gets damaged as long as it can handle 30 milliamps of current. But in case, there you can see with the three of them, we got 20 milliamps of current. So. We're going to look at, we're going to let this run a little while. We're going to look at why we may want to use two uh, 1 kilo ohm resistors. Of course, if you don't have a 500 ohm and you need one, you can take two parallel 1 kilo ohm resistors. That works nicely. But also, the uh, current going through these uh, resistors, the 500 ohm resistor is letting more current go through it. So it has more power to deal with. Power is voltage times current so the power for uh, the total unit or for this total circuit is 5 volts times uh, 20 milliamps of current and actually you do the math in amps so 5 volts divided by 0 0.02 but uh, in any case that number is actually being divided up by the three resistors so the one letting the most current through is going to get the hottest and so now we'll take a look at uh, the thermal image. So compared to my fingers, there you can my finger, you can see that the resistor on the left is hotter. Hopefully you can tell that. So in any case you can see it's got kind of a lighter color. What we can do, and you can also see where I set my finger down, it was warmer, but it faded away. So what we can do is we're gonna push the current rating or the uh, power rating of the 510 ohm resistor but in case we got to 9 volts we hit our current limit you can see it's constant current so I can hit that button there and raise the constant current we're gonna need at least 40 milliamps of current so let's raise that a little bit more and go back to voltage we're gonna put that to 10 volts so even with the 9 volts it was warming up uh, pretty quickly so let's shift this over now and they should be quite a bit warmer right now so this auto shuts off in there I think you can see quite a bit better that is really hot it's kind of white there and uh, the uh, this is looking pretty good usually the display doesn't look this good on camera but there's my finger you can see now the uh, before the one kilo ohm resistors because this compares the colors and so my finger is looking more blue like the background because the resistors are hotter especially that one right there it's quite a bit hotter so it does a comparison right there so in any case we're getting now 20 milliamps of current through that resistor we're close to its maximum current rating we won't want to do this all the time but uh, it, it should be okay and uh, so we got twice the current going through as one of these resistors but these two resistors the two kilo ohm resistors together can pass the same amount and so if you're worried about a resistor getting too hot you could just use in this case two equal values in parallel and let's turn the power off and it will provide the same current but the actual components themselves will not get as hot so I don't want to touch these right now what I'm gonna do is pluck one of these because we just looked at equal value that's pretty straightforward two equal value resistors in parallel will have 
half of the equivalent resistance right there. Now, we got a 510 ohm resistor there. We're just going to use 500 to make the math easy. And a 1 kilo ohm resistor there. So, the resistance is always going to be lower than the lowest value resistor when they're in parallel. That is just the uh, basic rule. And so, we're going to take... I didn't do the math or anything, but we have a 510 ohm resistor and a 1 kilo ohm resistor. So, it's going to be lower than 510 ohms, but since this component is twice the resistance, we're only going to lose probably about a third of the resistance because it's how well they conduct. And so, that one conducts a lot better, that one not so much. So we're not going to drift terribly far, but uh, somewhat far from the value of a 510. So I'm guessing probably about uh, 350 or so ohms of resistance. And polarity doesn't matter. That jumper just to the negative rail, nothing goes to positive. We are not completing a connection. We don't want to complete a connection while we measure resistance. And there you can see about uh, 334. So it's lower than the lowest value. But since this is somewhat higher, then this uh, the uh, equivalent resistance is not terribly low. So if we used like 100,000 ohms, it would just be slightly lower than this one by itself. And uh, again, if we use the equal value, then it would be half. So in any case, I didn't want to get too much into the math for these. But uh, I just want to point out that equal value ones are easier. And you got to kind of look up the math for the more uh, tougher ones. Math doesn't really go too well with uh, YouTube videos like this. Always make sure you turn the meter off, especially if you got current set, because you don't want to try to measure a power supply that doesn't limit current. Luckily this one does, so the meter would be okay. But if you try to measure the current of a battery directly, well the multimeter is set to measure current. The battery is going to put more current probably through it than it can handle, and uh, you'll blow a fuse. So I've done that once. It's a pretty common thing to do though, so it's best to just turn the meter off when you're done. So check out these other videos, subscribe, click the bell, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.